grade sevens, welcome to our natural sciences lesson. I'm Helen, and what is it that we're looking at today? Well, we're moving on to a brand new topic. We're going to be focusing on what are acids and bases. So this is our new interesting topic, but I don't want you to forget about what we have already covered, because what we've already covered informs us or helps us to understand this new section even better. So you'll remember that we have explored physical properties of materials. We looked at whether these materials were flexible or whether they were strong. We looked at whether they were mixtures, like mixtures of air, we also looked at the conductivity. So we looked at electrical conductivity as well as heat conductivity. And we saw some substances like metals are good conductors of heat and some substances like wood and plastics are poor conductors of heat or are insulators. We've looked at properties of materials that enable us to separate mixtures of the materials. So we've looked at things like evaporation, distillation, chromatography, along with all of our other methods of separating mixtures. But in every instance, in our past lessons, we have been concerned with the physical properties of materials. So our methods of separation of these materials were based on the physical properties of those materials. What the size of the particle was, whether it was magnetic or not, and so on. But now as we move on to our new topic, acids, bases, and neutrals, we are going to start looking at chemical properties of matter. And the chemical property that we're obviously focusing on is whether the material is an acid, a base, or neutral. So let's do a little comparison between physical properties of materials and chemical properties. What do we mean by these two words? And of course, we're both of our terms have that word properties in, which means that we're looking at characteristics, characteristics of the material. And when we look at physical properties, these are characteristics we can observe or describe, such as strength, durability, flexibility, conductivity. All of these characteristics can be observed and described without changing the nature of the substance. Because even if we mixed some of these substances, they only went into a mixture together that we could physically separate. However, when we come to chemical properties of materials, we're looking at something very different. The chemical properties, we're still looking at characteristics, but these are the properties that depend on the way the particles making up the material can undergo chemical changes and become a completely new substance. All right. So when we put salt and water together in a mixture, it looked like we had a brand new substance that it wasn't. It was just salty water. And we could physically separate into the water and the salt again. When we're talking about chemical changes, we're talking about making new substances or new materials based on the way other materials react with each other and combine with each other chemically. So we're looking at this on a particle level, the same as we looked at solids, liquids, and gases. But now particles of different substances are going to be chemically combined. That's what we mean about by chemical 
properties of matter. Now the chemical property that we are looking at and focusing on at the moment is, is the substance an acid, a base or a neutral? Remember when we looked at physical properties we said well something could be a solid, a liquid or a gas. Now we're saying let's look at some of the chemical properties. Is this substance an acid, a base or is it neutral? So acids, bases and neutrals are three different kinds of chemicals and they behave differently not because of their physical properties like flexibility, durability, conductivity for example, but because of the way they are going to react with other chemicals. So we have acids and our acids are going to be represented by this very cool lemon character and you can see that he has mixed himself up a lovely lemon cold drink and lemons you're going to discover have certain acids in them and lemon juice is acidic. So acid is the noun that we use to describe the thing and acidic is our adjective that we use in order to describe a particular material. Let's have a look at our base character. Our base is a lovely bubble of soapy water. I'm sure when you were younger, maybe even still, you like blowing bubbles. I know I do and I love blowing them and my dogs chase the bubbles and can't understand why the bubbles pop when they want to bite them. But soaps belong to a different group of chemicals called bases and the noun is the base and the adjective is basic. A substance is basic if it is a base. And then we've got our little character in the middle. He's kind of, nah, I'm not an acid, nah, I'm not a base, I'm just neutral, I'm in the middle. We can see he doesn't look very impressed with life, he's not an exciting acid, he's not a lovely bubble base, he's just neutral. So we're going to over our next few lessons be exploring what acids are, what bases are and what neutrals are. And we're going to have some fascinating discussions and you're going to be able to discover acids and bases in your own home as well as in industry. So we're going to look at the chemical properties of certain materials based on whether they are acids, bases or neutrals. Now I told you that acids, bases or neutrals are going to be put into that category depending on the way they react with other substances. So almost all liquids could be described as an acid, a base or a neutral. Which type of chemical substance it is depends on the type of ions it has making it up. Now let's unpack this word iron a little bit. An iron is a particle of substance. We're looking at a tiny invisible particle that we can't actually see with our naked eye. But because of the chemical structure of this particle, we know that those particles are there because when we put those particles together, the chemical substance behaves in a particular way. Now the ions that are important for us to know about when we're looking at acids and bases are hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So I'm going to show you a hydrogen ion symbol as a capital H. But hydrogen ions are not 
just particles of hydrogen, they carry a positive charge. So we write a little plus above our hydrogen symbol in order to indicate that it's not plain hydrogen, it's a hydrogen ion. Hydroxide, we can use the symbol O for oxygen and H for hydrogen. And when we have the O and the H chemically bonded together, it is called hydroxide. And hydroxide ions have a negative charge. So we indicate it with a little negative sign above or as a superscript to our OH. Now, what does this mean if we have ions? Well, we mean that ions have different electrical charges. Hydrogen ions, as we've seen, have a positive negative charge. And if we just had one hydrogen ion by itself, it's going to be a very, very weak positive charge. But if we have a substance that has a high concentration or lots and lots of hydrogen ions, that means there's going to be lots and lots of positive charge. Likewise, with our hydroxide ions, if a liquid only has a few hydroxide ions, it's not going to be very negatively charged. But if we have lots of hydroxide ions, we're going to have a very negatively charged liquid. Now, what does all of this happen or have to do with acids, bases and neutrals? So this was like a little bit of underlying theory to help you understand that the things that we call acids have lots of hydrogen ions. All right. The things that we call bases or the liquids that we call bases have lots of hydroxide ions. And so we can see that the two materials have different chemical properties. They're chemicals that make them up are very different in terms of the type of ions that they have. And because of the type of ions that they have, that is going to affect the way they behave, the way they behave when they mixed together or the way in which the substance is going to behave in terms of not only mixing with each other, but actually chemically bonding with each other to create a new substance. Now, what about our neutrals? Our neutrals are, mm, I'm not positive, mm, I'm not negative, I'm not acidic, I'm not basic, I'm boring in the middle. And Mostly, we'll find that with neutral substances, the amount of hydrogen ions equals the amount of hydroxide ions, which causes our substance not to be acidic, not to be basic, but to be neutral. Now, over our next few lessons, we're going to unpack what it means to be an acid. We're going to look at different examples of acids and the properties that a substance has if it has lots of hydrogen ions. How does it behave chemically? How can we recognize it chemically? Likewise, we'll move on to bases. We'll look at examples that you can find bases in your homes and in shops and in your everyday lives. What are the substances that have lots of hydroxide ions. We're going to look at substances that we depend on and we're going to find that neutrals are not boring at all. They may not react in a spectacular way as strong acids and strong bases, but one neutral substance that is most important, in fact, your body is made up of this substance in large quantities, that is water. 
So we're going to explore the properties and the characteristics, but they're going to be chemical properties, not physical properties of things called acids and bases. So I'll see you again next time for an exciting lesson on acids. For today, goodbye.